So lots of really cool and interesting things happening in the gaming industry. We've got Resident Evil 2 coming out, well, just in a few hours time here in the UK. Then we've got Kingdom Hearts 3 next week. February we've got Metro... Oh no. Oh no, I forgot to put my ball cap on. Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with an evening showing for you. Oh, where did it go? Oh well. Hair today, gone tomorrow. I'll get my coat. Uh, right, so what is this going to be about? Well, you probably read the title, so you know. Um, but Sebastian Stepien who is a games director at CD Projekt Red, has apparently left the company and is actually going to move over and work for Blizzard Entertainment, if the rumours are to be true. Now, the rumours are based off uh, Reset Era again. Boys are back. Second time today. Doing the Lord's work. By the Lord's work, I mean they're doing my work. For me. Uh, so they're back, and one of their keen-eyed peeps saw on LinkedIn that their profile, Stefan, uh, Sebastian's profile, is now showing that they are a creative director at Blizzard Entertainment from uh, January of 2019 uh, to present. So let's just say the rumours are true. And I say the rumours because neither Blizzard nor CD Projekt Red have confirmed this. Now, they could be crossing their I's and dotting the T's uh, or preparing statements or whatever. You know, they could be doing any of that shenanigans. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that it is actually true. I mean, it'd be a bit weird if it was actually to be a hoax. But, you know, people got to get the kick somehow. I take crack. That's not true. Heroin. Lots of heroin. Uh, anyway, so uh, if it is to be true, there's some really interesting kind of dynamics here because you've got and this is the way that i see it you may or may not agree with this but this is the way i see it in one corner you've got cd project red uh, a games company that in my eyes makes games for gamers and then on the other hand you have blizzard entertainment who in my eyes makes games for shareholders not for gamers uh, CD Projekt Red, their emphasis is always on entertaining the gamer, keeping them interested, producing great storylines, great characters, things for them to get involved with, non-repetitive content. You don't see content repeat, especially in the games like The Witcher 3. Lots of different quests, lots of different towns, lots of but everyone seems to have their own personality. Everything seems to be individual and unique. I never felt, when I played The Witcher 3 in particular, which I think is the greatest game ever, you made, uh, that I was ever going through the motions. I always felt like I was invested and interested in this new area, this new town, this new place, this new group of characters. Uh, I always felt I was invested in them at all times. Even if my um, brush together with them was very brief indeed. Everyone, in my eyes, had a unique voice. Not literally, because the voice actors... Uh, are repeated quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> but the characters felt as if they had their unique voices. Whereas Blizzard, well, I don't think their first um, loyalty is to the gamer anymore. I think their first loyalty is always now to the shareholder. Because that's who they've got to impress. That's who they've got to generate money for. And so they don't really care about the gamer. And I think that's been quite apparent from the state of the games that are in now. Heroes of the Storm... Overwatch, uh, uh, Diablo, World of Warcraft, you know? I think the state of those games speaks for itself in terms of how much Blizzard actually care. And from my own personal dealings majority of time with World of Warcraft, it just looks like a bunch of developers that really couldn't give a flying about anything. They just look so bored and disinterested, don't look as if they even play the product, and it certainly doesn't look like they give two hoots about the community either. 
Uh, it's always very dismissive, standoffish, and uh, yeah. So, you know, I've, I've gone through these things multiple times. So, in my eyes, company who's doing everything for the gamer, company who's doing everything for the shareholder. So, what happens when you have somebody of Sebastian's talent? And Sebastian is a ridiculously talented person. When you look through their CV, uh, what they've actually done, they've worked on The Witcher, The Witcher 2, The Witcher 3, uh, one of the main storytellers in The Witcher 3. So, a lot of that fantastic work in what I think is the greatest game ever created, uh, is going to be attributed towards Sebastian. And then, from, uh, I think, 2013 to current day, something like that, uh, they were working on Cyberpunk 2077 as the narrative and setting director. So six years, almost six years, maybe sometime this year it would have been six years, so five and a bit years, he was working on that. So there's a lot of hard work which has gone in by this, this chap. And his focus would have always been for the gamer. For the gamer, for the gamer, for the gamer, for the gamer. So with him moving over to Blizzard Entertainment, where does he fit in? How does his role fit in and will it actually work for him? Now, I imagine that Blizzard are paying him an absolute fortune to have moved over there. And I think this is a huge coup for them. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think him going to the company uh, is, is, it can only enhance them in terms of talent. However, it's how you utilise talent. I mean, you could have the greatest football players in the world. You could have the best striker. But if you play him in goal, he ain't going to do much for you at the end of the day. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to play to these people's strengths. Now, we do know that uh, Blizzard are working on things like Diablo 4. Well, I say we do know. That's bollocks, actually. I take that back. We don't know. We've been told that they are, and we've seen articles that have seen some iteration of Diablo 4, but they all come to a dead end. Maybe, just maybe, Sebastian has been brought on to helm the Diablo 4 storyline. But I think it would be much, much smarter from a Blizzard perspective. One thing Blizzard needs is IP. That's what they're desperate for right now. They have no IP that we are aware of in development. No new IP. Their, their newest IP was Overwatch, and it kind of has already peaked. I'd imagine, you know, it feels like it's already peaked. It's, it's already hit that zenith point for it, and I don't see where Overwatch can go back to the top in terms of like a, a massive, massive, massive game. You know, it's still well played, don't get me wrong, it's still well played and well watched on Twitch and all that kind of stuff, but they looking at it from a revenue perspective, and of course when it first came out, loads of people were buying the crappy loot boxes, and now that everyone's really kind of like smartened up a bit more to what loot box system really is, uh, it's dropped off dramatically. So how do Blizzard turn that curve back up again? I don't think they can. So I think the best usage of uh, Sebastian would be for a brand new IP. The problem is, again, Activision. Because even if Blizzard are making a brand new IP, as attractive, as, as cool as that may sound, if we were talking about Blizzard from 10 years ago, 2019 Blizzard is a different kettle of fish altogether. BlizzCon last year changed everything. It changed how we look at Blizzard. It changed how we look at their um, their IPs going forward. And I think more importantly, it, it really cast a, a, a spotlight on exactly how they feel about their customer base. And they don't give a shit. They made that very apparent at BlizzCon. They couldn't give a toss about you. They really couldn't. Alan Adam made that very, very clear in the press conference. We're looking to go into mobile, and we're looking forward to catering to the East, because when I showed the stats on another video recently, that's where the bulk of the money is right now in the gaming industry, in the Chinese mobile marketplace. And that's where Blizzard want a piece of that pie. So just imagine if Sebastian has been brought on to helm a mobile project. That would uh, 
I don't know. I mean, it, it could happen. You just never know. But let's just say, let's just play the other devil's advocate. Because I always think the negative of Blizzard because they've given me nothing, nothing to make me assume otherwise, to see the positive in them. They haven't done anything for years now to make me see the positive nature of them. So let me just play my own devil's advocate. And let's say they are creating a brand new PC-based IP and one that they really want to build in Blizzard's founding words of quality, etc. Well, in that case, this is monumental for them. Absolutely monumental for them. But with Blizzard, you just never know. You really just never know. But enough talk about them. Let's just touch on CD Projekt Red. Because I think some people are going to be very concerned about what's going to happen to Cyberpunk 2077. What I will say is uh, I wouldn't panic in the slightest. Uh, to me, uh, if you've been working on this for five and a half, six odd years, uh, the chances are the vast majority, if not all, of your work is done. And they did say a couple of months ago that, you know, that, that work was progressing really quickly now on Cyberpunk 2077 because things seem to be in place for them to now just go, right. I just wanted to click my fingers. But it's, they said that things are progressing really quickly because things are literally, everything's now been put into place and it's, they're now kind of like flashing it. Fleshing it out. So that to me says really that his work is done. My work here is done. And so him leaving CD Projekt Red, I think is, is a loss for the company because of the great work which he's done. The phenomenal work which he's done. But I don't think it's going to have an effect on Cyberpunk 2077 from here on in to completion. And it does kind of also fuel um, the hope uh, that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 might be ready for a Q4 release this year. Oh! Uh, uh. Uh, probably March next year is what I would speculate. But, you know, if we're getting to that sort of end game now, then who knows? You know, he, he could be ready coming... You know, we could get a nice surprise coming three or uh, just a nice surprise in general with a release date announced. So I don't think it's going to have an effect on Cyberpunk 2077, but it is a good, it is a great loss for, Cy, uh, for CD Projekt Red. But when you've been at a company for 13 years or so, like he has been, you know, he could be looking for more opportunities. Hey, I, I, I don't say this in any disrespectful way to Sebastian, but he could be saying, look, you know, I'm going to get a payday at Blizzard working on whatever they want me to, you know, I don't care. So he could, you know, he could be taking like a, 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 a nice big fat retirement fund uh, pension check, you know, <laughs> to go to Blizzard. But yeah, I wouldn't panic about Cyberpunk and uh, it's really in Blizzard's court how they use him. It's really in Blizzard's court how they use him if all of this, of course, is to be believed. I will link this in the description box down below so i hope you enjoyed the vid if you did do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media and twitch for live streaming links they're in the description box down below and i'll be back with some more stuff very soon you take care bye for now